When it comes to subcompact SUVs, Americans love the Subaru Crosstrek. With over 150,000 units sold last year, this model was the best-selling small SUV in its class. And for 2023, Subaru introduced an all-new Crosstrek, moving it to its third generation. However, this year, the company is introducing the most off-road capable version of the Crosstrek ever with this model. This right here is the first ever Crosstrek Wilderness. And with up to 9.3 inches of ground clearance, standard all-terrain tires, and a skid plate underneath, Subaru is claiming this model here is going to be able to take you a little further off the beaten path. So today we're actually out here at Zion National Park here in Utah. And the big question I want answered, has Subaru managed to create the most off-road capable cross track ever? Stay tuned to find out. So before we start talking about the unique styling touches with this wilderness trim, I thought I'd pop the hood and show you guys what's powering this thing. Now, traditionally, the Crosstrek has always had a two liter naturally aspirated boxer flat four cylinder en engine. That's what the first generation Crosstrek has always had. Uh, for the second generation, Subaru introduced a bigger two and a half liter engine. And for 2024, this wilderness comes standard with that powertrain. This is of course the signature FA24 uh, or 25 gasoline direct injection boxer flat floor our four cylinder, it makes the same horsepower as the other trims. It's a two and a half liter making 182 horsepower and 178 pound feet of torque. I am sad that Subaru didn't give this model more horsepower or torque, or better yet, they couldn't have put the turbo engine in this vehicle from the Outback Wilderness. But again, that's something that Subaru just says Crosstrek owners haven't uh, demanded for. They have, however, made some improvements to this powertrain in terms of the cooling and in terms of the transmission. So it still uses a linear Tronic CVT. However, it has been beefed up with a lower final drive ratio to improve the off-road capability. It also has a transmission cooler. Subaru has also beefed up the radiator fan and the rear differential of this vehicle to give it more towing capacity. So uh, Subaru says this model here will tow a maximum of 3,500 pounds compared to 1,500 pounds. And the lower final drive ratio allows this vehicle to have better acceleration, although it has gained a little bit of weight. So we have that CVT and we also have fuel economy numbers of 25 in the city, 29 on the highway. That's about a three to four MPG reduction versus a sport or a limited trim. This vehicle still has a 16 and a half gallon fuel tank. So you're looking at just over 400 miles of range on a full tank. As this vehicle sits, it weighs in at just over 3,400 pounds. So it's about 30 to 40 pounds heavier than a regular Crosstrek limited or Crosstrek sport. However, Subaru doesn't quote a zero to 60 time, but they did say it should be similar in terms of the performance as a sport or a limited despite the weight gain. And that's because of the uh, lower final drive ratio. But let's go ahead and close up this hood, which as you can see is held up by a prop rod, which most of the vehicles in the segment have. But I want you to notice something about the hood. You can see there's kind of like this little stripe over here, this little uh, decal, which Subaru says helps reduce glare. It's kind of like an anti-glare decal on the hood. It looks really good with this Alpine green paint. This is, of course, a new color that was introduced uh, this year on this all-new generation Crosstrek. It looks really good on the Wilderness trim. This is about a $400 upcharge. Uh, and you can see here, in terms of the design, the Wilderness does have its own unique front fascia. So you can see here, the front bumper has a lot of plastic cladding. And that's, of course, to increase the durability of this vehicle. The hexagonal grille has a slightly different look to it, where there's kind of like these X's, two of them, in the actual grille itself. Subaru says they kind of zoomed in on the pattern to kind of create that X pattern here in the grille, which I think actually looks pretty good with the Subaru logo. You have the kind of uh, uh, the bronze accents that you'll find throughout the vehicle as well. And then you also have the standard full LED headlight which are swiveling adaptive. You have an LED daytime running light, LED turn signals, LED low and high beams. And then you have this really interesting six LED design to the uh, LED fog light, which I love how Subaru is still putting an LED fog light in this vehicle. And then uh, underneath here, you can't see it from this angle, but this vehicle does have uh, an engine skid plate, which is aluminum, Subaru says. They said it's, uh, they didn't, they couldn't tell me how thick the actual skid plate is, but they said it's thick enough. And it's also going to help protect the engine, of course. And I believe Subaru will also offer even more under skid plate underbody protection through its dealerships, but it will come standard with an engine skid plate from the factory. And like I said earlier, up to 9.3 inches of ground clearance. That's a 0.3 or 0.6 inch lift in the suspension. But overall, let me know what you guys think of the styling changes. I think it's pretty successful. Typically, I don't like all the additional cladding that Subaru puts on their vehicles, but I think it's a tasteful amount and it works on this vehicle. I think it looks a lot better versus the Crosstrek Sport that we tested 
earlier this year that had the kind of yellow accents splashed throughout the vehicle. This just looks a little bit more cohesive. Now, moving around the side profile of the vehicle, this is actually a car that is a little bit longer than the regular Crosstrek at 176.4 inches long. This is actually on the big end. If you guys look at competitors like the Jeep Compass or the uh, Ford Bronco uh, Sport, this is actually longer by about three inches in the overall length. It still has a 104.9 inch long wheelbase. Uh, and in terms of the width, Subaru made this car about an inch wider and a half an inch taller. That's of course having to do with the suspension lift that you get with this car. You can see the wheels. These are also a unique wheel that you get with the wilderness trim. They're kind of a 17 inch matte black finish. And you also have a 225 by 60 R17 Yokohama Geolander all-terrain tire. Uh, so this is a tire you're gonna really need when you guys plan to take it off-roading. We're gonna visit an off-road course later on so we can show you guys that. You have four wheel disc brakes, of course, all independent suspension. And you can see here, the cladding on this vehicle has also been enlarged. So there's extra cladding here along the side of the vehicle. There's also a Subaru Wilderness badge here. There's a lot more cladding over here, along with this big cross track there in the bronze color, which again, goes really well with the bronze accents here on the roof rails, which by the way, these roof rails have been strengthened on the Wilderness to carry up to 700 pounds of weight. That's static weight. So you could easily put a tent up here. If you guys plan to go camping and whatnot, you can have a roof tent and it can easily support two people on the roof. I also like the fact that there's no chrome trim. It's kind of all been blacked out. Uh, you have a look over here at the back, which is pretty standard stuff for the cross check. Although, as you can see, I'm actually surprised Subaru didn't put like a bigger wing over here. You can see we've been having some fun off-roading where I decided to write wash me on the back. I imagine a lot of cross check owners are gonna end up doing that anyways, taking their cars out to these kind of trails. And then looking at the rear here, you can see the badges here have been kind of blacked out. You get the Subaru Wilderness badge. You have more of the um, bronze accents here and then you can see here it says Subaru very boldly on the rear bumper which by the way this is not a painted bumper this is exclusive to the Crosstrek Wilderness trim the company says that only the Wilderness will get this I think it's actually a styling element that perhaps other Crosstrek owners of this generation will probably really want to get you can see you have integrated parking sensors Subaru also says that some of the pieces here like the corner pieces of the rear bumper are removable in a single piece you can easily easily replace that if you guys damage it when you're off-roading which is again a really nice touch Subaru is thinking about owners here and you know, cost and repairs and whatnot. Uh, my, this model here doesn't have a tow hitch, but like I said earlier, up to 3,500 pounds of max towing capacity, thanks to that transmission cooler and the beefier rear diff. Remember, symmetrical all-wheel drive is standard on this car. Now, one thing I wish Subaru would have added, however, is when you open up the tailgate, there's no power lift gate. A lot of the competitors are offering a power lift gate, something like the new Hyundai Kona, for example, or a Corolla Cross, but it's not available as an option on any price for the Crosstrek. It kind of shows its place in the hierarchy, but you can see here, in terms of cargo space, you have just under 20 cubic feet of total storage space with the seats folded up. There's no third row in this vehicle here, but you can see, I love how you have this like Subaru Wilderness tray. Uh, if you look underneath here, you can also find a temporary spare tire, which if it's an off-road vehicle, you're gonna want to have more of a full-size spare, but at least Subaru does still give you, you know, the option of a temporary spare. The headliner also is now black. Subaru says they made it black so that if you're like putting a bike in here and you accidentally scuff the roof, it won't leave an actual scuff mark. If you fold down the second row seats, which you can do from back here, although it's kind of a far reach, um, Subaru says, which the seats are kind of in the way, it'll expand the cargo to just over or just under 55 cubic feet, which is a pretty good amount. This is not class leading, but uh, the Crosstrek has always been a really practical vehicle. And I think owners are going to find plenty of useful space uh, when you look at the cargo area. The other thing I forgot to mention, there is also an LED light up here that kind of shines light uh, over you if you guys are out here like changing or something in the dark. Uh, and that's unique to the wilderness trim. But overall, aside from just a power lift gate, this is a pretty usable cargo area. So moving on to the interior of the Crosstrek Wilderness. If you guys have spent some time in the limited trim, this doesn't seem all that different. There are some changes to it, but unlike the exterior where there was a bunch, Subaru decided to keep it pretty subtle in here. Now, once I get in and shut the door, the door has a relatively solid sounding thunk. It also had a really easy step in height because of the fact that we have all that ground clearance. You can see here's the key fob for the vehicle. All, all wilderness versions of the Crosstrek come standard with the company's smart key access system with uh, the usual buttons here for lock, unlock, open up the trunk, although it's not a power lift gate. And then you have the panic function to start the engine up. You can see the button is right here, which you can kind of easily confuse with the trip reset button on accident if you aren't paying attention. But starting it up, you can see this is not a hybrid or a mild hybrid in any form. So it has a traditional Subaru startup noise. And then you can see here the interior. I hope you guys like a dark interior because this is the only color combination you can get. And you can also get standard, or you get standard with this trim, the StarTex trim. So this is their water resistant, water repellent, uh, faux leather material with the bronze accents and stitching. You also have two level heated seats, which is nice. Uh, the seats themselves have been fully redesigned. Subaru says they're a lot more comfortable on longer trips as well. 
And uh, on my side here, I have an eight-way power driver's seat with two-way uh, lumbar support, although no memory seats. Now, this power driver's seat is included when you guys add the option package for $2,300 that includes the moonroof and the Harman Kardon stereo. The passenger seat, however, is a manual four-way. Um, keep in mind, again, this is still on pretty low end of the totem pole. There's no cooled seats available or a power passenger seat, no memory seats, like I said. So you do have to make do with some lower end features, but Subaru does surprise you with some nice touches. Now, first of all, the door panel here has a soft touch area here where it's the same soft text as the seats with the contrasting stitching. It's padded here where you'd rest your elbow. It's hard touch plastic over here, and then you have some fake carbon fiber trim over on this area. You can see the door handle is just plastic. I would have liked to see that as chrome or aluminum. You can see here window controls, one touch up down for the front windows. However, the rear are not one touch at all. I wish Subaru would have just made them one touch for all four. That would have been nice. Uh, down here, you can see it's hard touch plastic. You do have uh, some storage down here. And then there's the Harman Kardon stereo speakers, which the sound system sounds decent. If you guys are an audiophile, you're gonna wanna probably check the box here to get that upgraded audio system. Now, in terms of the steering wheel, you can see it looks pretty similar to the regular uh, Crosstrek. It does have some unique uh, bronze stitching and along with the bronze accents here. The wheel itself has a manual tilt and telescoping arrangement with a good amount of adjustability. The bronze theme also carries over into the instrument panel where you have these bronze rings surrounding the tachometer and the speedometer. Subaru is one of the last pulled out brands that still isn't doing a fully digital gauge cluster. You can see you just have that kind of helper screen in the center where you can kind of adjust a couple of things where it shows you your Subaru eyesight. I also like how when you hit the brakes, the little car there shows the brakes. If I signal, it doesn't show a, a turn signal there. Some manufacturers are kind of showing that little detail but it's nice to see Subaru is including that little graphic. The steering wheel itself has a bunch of buttons on it for your audio controls, for the EyeSight driver assistance tech, which this vehicle has some of the best actually in the industry, um, despite the fact that this is not a premium brand. You have paddles on the wheel, you have your drive mode selector here where there's an intelligent mode and then a sport sharp mode or just a sport mode. There's no sport sharp technically, so it's either intelligent or sport. We'll talk about that later on in the driving scene. The one thing I really wanna fault this car, however, for, however is the puny, pathetic sounding horn. Literally, Rob had to use it earlier today because somebody cut us off and it is literally the most pathetic sounding horn ever. So shame on you, Subaru, for not putting a better sounding horn on this car. Something I imagine the aftermarket will probably end up fixing. Now, in terms of the rest of the dash, you can see you have a hard touch area here. This is also hard touch, but over here, it is a soft touch injection molded plastic. Over here, it's just like kind of rubberized finish. You have more of that fake carbon fiber look trim. The glove compartment you can see is a bin style. It's stamped, but not lined with felt. It offers a good amount. Of space and then you can see here the Starlink infotainment system here is just over 11 inches it hasn't really changed this is one of the biggest uh, uh, infotainment systems in its segment it has now wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto Subaru software still needs some work I will say that the wireless CarPlay is working now I couldn't get it to work earlier where I had to kind of shut the car off and restart it but then it started working flawlessly of course um, the graphics look okay uh, it still gets kind of washed out in bright sunlight but it's nice to see that Subaru did update the uh, CarPlay to where it takes up more of the screen. Uh, when you go back to the Subaru system, you can see there's your usual buttons and widgets to go to your, all your usual sources. There is no embedded GPS in this car. That's what this car doesn't offer from the factory. Most people will be using the Subaru or the, your Apple CarPlay or Android Auto information anyways. You have your climate controls, which are always down here. It's got a dual zone automatic climate control with heated seats, like I said. Uh, and then you can also access vehicle settings from over here. And then this screen right here basically allows you to kind of adjust the X mode, which you guys saw there's two different levels to the X mode, which as you can see, it's kind of a little bit finicky at times. There's snow and dirt, there's normal, and then deep snow and mud. That's unique to the 2.5 liter engines. But you can see here, I can kind of show the weather there. I can show your different information. I can show like an audio screen. So this is kind of like, Basically, Subaru used to have an eyebrow lip display over here, which was separate. Now they've kind of put it into one display, which looks better, but I think the software behind it still needs some upgrades. But I like the fact that Subaru at least has added wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So that's an improvement. The one thing that needs an improvement, however, is the backup camera. You can see there's just the regular backup camera. Uh, it offers trajectory and distance markers and reverse automatic braking and parking sensors, but the graphics aren't wonderful, and I also don't like how it doesn't take up the whole screen. There's no front camera or 360 camera available in this car. So again, it shows where this car fits on the totem pole. Down here, you can see you have two USB charging ports, a USB-A and a USB-C. You have a wireless phone charging pad here, which fits my iPhone iPhone 14 Pro Max nicely. Uh, this right here has the traditional shifter for the linear Tronic CVT. It has a manual mode here along with paddle shifters. I like how it's a traditional gear lever. lever. Some of you may you know, wonder why Subaru hasn't gone to an electronic one to save space, but you do have an electronic parking brake here. You have your two level heated seats, which by the way, that heated seat switch is definitely an older switch. Uh, over here, you can see cup holders. You have an actual 12 volt power outlet over here. 
uh, which is nice. A little bit more storage here. This is a padded center console. Open this up, you can see it's actually a pretty deep size. Both of our camera gear fits in here uh, quite nicely. Um, but overall, you can see here, the interior hasn't really changed too much. It has most of the tech that people are going to like, but if you're looking for upscale touches like a panel roof or a memory seats or heated and cooled seats, this is where the Crosstrek does show that it doesn't offer those features where some of its competitors do. However, this car is significantly less expensive. Now, one of the reasons why the Crosstrek is so popular with families even is the back seat accommodations. Now, first of all, when you open up the rear door, Subaru actually says this door opens at nearly a 90 degree angle, which is wonderful if you need to actually fit a car seat back here. Uh, the seats themselves, they also fold down. Obviously, they don't give you a recline function, but when you do fold them down, it almost gives you a completely flat floor, which is nice. But once you get back here, there's around 36 and a half inches of legroom. Now, that doesn't sound like a lot. It's actually in term average in terms of the class, but for somebody that's five foot seven, this is where I have the seat to drive. Um, and you can see here the headroom space for me is fine. The sunroof obviously obviously takes up room a little bit, but it is kind of sculpted back here to give you back some of the space. Material quality back here is sadly all hard touch plastic materials, but it is padded here where you'd rest your elbow. It's all hard touch here on the upper portion. There's a little bit of storage down here. And then looking at the seat back, you can see there's only one storage pocket here. You have two USB charging ports, an A and a C. No rear seat air vents. I would like to see Subaru add rear seat air vents just to make rear passengers more comfortable. There's a hump here that also intrudes on the middle passenger. So if you want to fit three across, this is where this car is going to show that it's a little bit of a smaller vehicle, but for somebody average height, or if you need to put a car seat back here, it's certainly usable. You can see there's also an armrest that folds down and gives you two cup holders. Uh, and overall, however, it should have enough space for most people, but just keep in mind, some competitors like the Volkswagen Taos are going to give you an even bigger back seat. So here we are in the first ever Subaru Crosstrek Wilderness. Dealers and owners have been asking for a more off-road capable version of the Crosstrek for years. And now that we're finally driving a factory version of this car, we're gonna start out out on the road. Uh, eventually we're gonna to switch to an off-road course and see how this car does. But most people are gonna be driving this vehicle out on the road anyway. So let's go ahead and see what we can get zero to 60 wise. I wanna remind you we are at around 3,800 feet above sea level. This is a naturally aspirated engine, so it's not going to get quite as good of acceleration time. Subaru says it should be pretty similar to the standard uh, 2.5 cross track. But let's go ahead and see what we can get. It's in sport mode. We'll brake tow it. It's all wheel drive, remember. It actually feels pretty strong off the line. Doesn't sound great, obviously. 8.75 seconds there. Now that is actually with a 2.2% downhill gradient. Um, so we'll see if we can find a slightly more level road. I'd probably estimate this car back home on our area at uh, sea level. It'll probably be in the un just under eight second range, which is a perfectly acceptable number. Remember, the Crosstrek is supposed to be the most affordable wilderness uh, Subaru, basically. And that's the reason why Subaru didn't see fit to put the 2.5 liter or 2.4 liter turbo engine. It would have done wonderful in this car. I, we've really been asking for Subaru to kind of do like a Crosstrek WRX. But again, the company just has, hasn't seen fit to do so. Uh, but overall, the power for this powertrain should be sufficient for most. Uh, and again, for people who you know, are used to the two liter cross track, you're probably gonna get into this car and find the power to be pretty much acceptable. But let's try it here again one more time. This looks pretty level. We'll brake torque it. And Rob keeps uh, shutting off the AC to see if we can uh, help save a little bit of time. <laughs> cool <civic> mindset, so <laughs> kind of 9.2 there, and that's with it more slightly level. So we'll take that number and again, remind yourself that this is at almost 4,000 feet above sea level. So we're at almost a mile above sea level. It's going to make this car feel noticeably slower. Now, the other aspect I wanna talk about with this vehicle, let me switch the drive mode back to its intelligent mode here. Uh, this car has all-terrain tires. It has a lifted suspension, uh, about a half an inch lift. You're probably wondering how does it feel out on the highway uh, in terms of just daily drivability. Uh, and this is where I noticed the car, now that we're, unfortunately, we're kind of stuck behind this slow Nissan in front of us. Um, at higher speeds, it definitely has a little bit more road noise, a little bit more wind noise. Those tires are gonna be doing something. The roof rails also, they're not quite as aerodynamic. They are designed to hold more weight on the roof because Subaru says that you can hold up to 700 pounds of static weight up there, so you can easily put a roof tent. So you, you basically have to deal with slightly elevated road and wind noise, which it's not too bad. 
uh, for those of you who are modifying the car anyways, you're going to notice that. In terms of the ride quality, though, the Wilderness Tune suspension, the lifted suspension, still gives this car a pretty soft ride quality. Uh, the steering in the Crosstrek is pretty light and numb. It's not the quickest ratio. I feel like Subaru adjusted the, the ratio a little bit to uh, for off-road uses. The CVT has a lower final drive ratio, which does improve the acceleration and the off-road ability. And that's the reason why Subaru claims the zero to 60 time is similar for this car as the regular Crosstrek Sport or Limited, even though this car weighs a little bit more. I think I saw it was like 20 pounds more than the regular Crosstrek, so it's not exactly that much. It's pretty negligible. Uh, and in terms of visibility, you can still see out of the Crosstrek extremely well. Subarus in general have really excellent drivability where it has good sight lines, good view out of the front, the side, the rear. The seats are also very comfortable. These are the StarTech seats that come standard on the Wilderness. Subaru actually says they worked with a medical team to make these seats more comfortable and to hold you in place uh, better when you are you know, going around some corners or doing some off-roading. we definitely, I definitely noticed the seats are nice. It would be nice if Subaru did offer like a cooled seat, but remember this car uh, is just, you know, it's just a cross track. It's on the pretty low end of the totem pole. There's not even an auto dimming review mirror in this car, which I'm surprised to see that on this loaded trim, it doesn't have that. Uh, but overall, uh, it's still a really nice vehicle to, to drive out on the streets. Uh, in terms of safety gear, this car comes standard, of course, with their latest EyeSight driver assist technology. And of course, it works with this uh, lifted suspension. Subaru always tells us that if you lift the car suspension, the EyeSight won't actually work on the prior generation. So that's something to keep in mind if you guys are considering this car. And then in terms of fuel economy, I can't really speak too much on that because we're on a very short media drive and the car only has 540 miles on it. But in the short time that we've been driving it, it's quickly averaged around 24 mpg which is fine this car does have a relatively large 16.6 .6 gallon fuel tank which theoretically you could do uh, if it gets 25 29 that's around a 3 mpg reduction over the regular cross track you could theoretically do over 400 miles of range so we'll have to retest that when we have one back home for a week and see what we can actually do in the real world but overall out on the road basically everything that you like about the regular cross track is still present here uh, but really this is the wilderness version so let's go ahead and switch over to the off-road section and see how this uh, car does out there so to show off the extra capability of this Wilderness Crosstrek, Subaru has us on this off-road course, which by the way, before we even set foot onto here, or set wheels onto here, I switched it, the X mode into the deep snow and mud setting. This is all software programming that allows for additional slippage, of course, and allows for the stability control to not be so aggressive. So it gives you some more wheel spin to kind of get you up these challenging slippery or wet or whatever surfaces but Subaru says that this is a very technical course we're going to be going through some mud and some going uphill going through some rocks there's actually a little bit of mud here I wasn't expecting that oh, yeah. uh, I'm going straight here right Rom I think I so. go left down the mud I think are you sure I, yeah <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, do it. It'll be fine. Are you there's, sure? there's the green thing they told us to look about. Okay. I was like, wow. You I was thinking you're going to get stuck. Come on. <laughs> I wasn't. And this is literally our first time going down the course here. But again, with 9.3 uh, inches of ground clearance, we've got these Yokohama Geolander all terrain tires. We've got skid plates, or at least one skid plate. Uh, wow. I mean, this is kind of stuff that you wouldn't expect a Subaru to be able to go through. So this is where uh, the Crosstrek will show its smaller size. And this is where I think this car may actually be the most capable version of the Wilderness trims for Subaru because it is so small and it has essentially the same ground clearance. It's in between the Forester Wilderness and the uh, Outback Wilderness. But you can see here, we'll start going up this like relatively steep and challenging incline. And I have the X mode here in deep mud and uh, snow still. Now Subaru says I want to stay to keep that in my left, but again, I'm just kind of modulating the throttle and this is where our front camera would be nice so I can see, but you can see this car just makes it seem so easy. And I also, I love the small size of this. Uh... Do I go that way? Oh, that way, <laughs> of course. Sorry guys, this is my first time actually going on this course. So I'm a little confused at times, but so, Essentially, this is testing out the traction control. This is testing out the articulation, uh, the software programming, and uh, the suspension also really does a good job of soaking up the bumps and whatnot. So this is kind of showing just how much capability Subaru has built into this car. And it's probably stuff that most owners won't even do most likely, but it's nice that the car can actually do it. Do you want to get back in, Rob, or? No, you're good. Okay. 
So again, these tight turns are really showcasing the nimbleness of this car and how small it is. And it's just really easy. Like some big four wheelers have like a four wheel steering or they have that trail turn assist. This car doesn't need it because it's so small. And that's kind of the beauty about the cross track wilderness is it uh, gives you all that capability you're looking for in a really tidy small package. And I'm just, I'm really enjoying this. This is something that I think uh, a lot of cross track owners do in the real world. And this car just makes it seem really easy. It's so smooth, it's so comfortable. Eek. That's where you have to appreciate a smaller size vehicle is when you rub against some shrubs. I mean, that does uh, scratch the vehicle a little bit, but oh, so I apparently I have to drive up this. So this is pretty steep. Holy moly, okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we're going to go up this hill and see if this car can make it. Again, I have never done this before, so let's try it. Oh, my foot is pretty hard down. Come on. Oh, oh God. Oh God. Okay. I don't think I'm going to make it up this hill. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> well, that wasn't supposed to happen. <laughs> Let me try that again. And actually I'm feeling the, uh, the downhill assist kind of helping me out there. So let's try this again. I have to get a lot more momentum and get, and hoon it up the hill. That's what they told me. So let's try this one more time. All right, guys, I can barely stand on the side of this mountain. So it wasn't the Subaru's fault because I'm about to fall off the side. I'm blaming this one on, on, on Sofian, just being Sofian. Love you, man. Start gutting it, like, right now. Okay. You got it, Sofian. All right, I'll be do this. <laughs> All right, let's see if we can get it up this hill. Oh, oh God, okay, wow. <laughs> that was intense. <laughs> Okay, and all right. Let me get to the bottom first so you don't kill me. Yes. Yeah. And then, uh, you know. <laughs> I can't see you, so I'll have her tell me yeah, when you're I'll at the bottom. You, I'll let you go all the way to the other side. Okay, perfect. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't trust you. Run fast! <laughs> okay, I almost just killed myself doing that, so if the car can do it, good job. All right, so now we're gonna test out the hill descent control. It's a very steep hill, but this will keep the speed below five miles an hour. There we go. Okay, so there. Wow, it's applying the brakes, and then now I, they say I can kind of goose it up the hill. When in doubt, throttle out, right? There we go. <laughs> yeah, this thing really is a little mountain goat. I mean, it does some things that you wouldn't expect a vehicle in this class to do. Wait, wait for me. I don't want to walk through the desert. Right? I'd like to get back in the car. And it does it really, really well. Rob, would you like to get back? Would you like to get back inside? Huh? Would you like to get back inside? I would love to get back inside. <laughs> okay. right, are we done? Yeah. So even though most subcompact SUV owners will likely never take their vehicle into the kind of conditions that Subaru has presented us with today, it's pretty reassuring to see that Subaru has built a Crosstrek that can easily handle anything that we threw at it today. And it's really one of the most capable small SUVs out there. It's surprising as well because in this segment of vehicles, you can find things like the Ford Bronco Sport and the Jeep Compass Trailhawk. However, the Subaru Crosstrek Wilderness really is in a unique space because this vehicle here has a lot of hardware changes to make it more off-road capable. You guys saw the lower final drive ratio, really gave it the, the necessary means to get up those obstacles. It has the increased ground clearance, which really prevented the underbody from uh, scraping on those rocks and whatnot. And the look of this car, I think it actually looks really nice. I like all the additional cladding that Subaru has added, uh, painted in this alpine green color. The interior, while it is missing some luxury touches that you can find in some competitors, where the Crosstrek really excels is in the price tag. Because if you guys are looking to get your hands on the new Crosstrek Wilderness, this vehicle is starting production now now and it's heading to dealerships as we speak. And Subaru says that you can get all of the upgrades on this car, which I'm trying not to fall down the hill here. You can get all the upgrades on this car for about $1,100 more versus a limited. This car starts at $31,995. $31,995 in today's world where everything is so darn expensive. The average new price of a car is over 50,000 or almost $50,000. This particular one here 
there with the Harman Kardon stereo, the sunroof, the power driver's seat, and the Alpine green paint, plus the destination charge, you're looking at $35,600. Now that may sound like a lot, especially for a Crosstrek, but keep in mind, in this segment of vehicle, obviously if you look at something like the HRV, the Corolla Cross, the Hyundai Kona, the Kia Seltos, none of them offer an off-road capable version like this model. Even in fact, the Crosstrek is already off-road capable, even if you guys don't go for the wilderness version. Really to get the same kind of capability, you have to go to a Compass Trailhawk or a Ford Bronco Sport Badlands. And those models fully well or well equipped basically with the same kind of features that this car has, will sticker at well over $40,000. In fact, I built a Compass Trailhawk for around $48,000. 48 grand for a Jeep Compass is just ridiculous. A Bronco Badlands is easy around, easily around $45,000. So the competitors that have similar capability to this car are easily $10,000 more, and that's what makes the Crosstrek Wilderness a super unique offering. And to me, I personally think this might actually be the most offerable, off-road capable Subaru out there because of the Crosstrek's diminutive size. And with the addition of the new wilderness model there's no doubt that subaru will easily maintain their position as the best-selling subcompact suv here in america but all that said hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the brand new 2024 subaru crosstrek wilderness if you're also looking to see the latest cars i'm testing be sure to follow me on instagram at redline underscore reviews like us on facebook and as always guys please keep subscribing to the redline reviews youtube channel for all the latest reviews thank you so much for watching i'll catch you all in the next video